Limits can be pretty tricky, especially if they involve division, because often you'll receive a question that looks something like this. We'll have the limit as x approaches zero, uh, x plus cos 2x minus e to the x. But they won't make it easy, and they'll tell you to divide by x squared. So the first thing we try and do when we do a limit is to try and you know, substitute in zero. But of course we can't because zero squared will be zero and we can't divide by zero. So using something called L'Hopital's rule, L'Hopital's rule, we can get past this uh, dividing by zero. So if we have the, I mean L'Hopital's rule is basically if the function on the top we, we call the function on the top, the, let's say the top function, we, we split it into two. So we have a top function and we'll call that f of x. And then we take the bottom function and we call that the bottom, bottom function, bottom function equals g of x. And so if they exist and are continuous on both both sides, you know, if the limit exists on both of the top and the bottom, then we can say that if f of x over g of x equals L, then, then if, if this, then f prime of x over g prime of x will also equal L, then we can also say one more thing. We can say f prime prime of x over g prime prime of x also equals L and so forth as long as the limits exist on both sides. So what we can do here is we can take the derivative of the top, which will just be, you know, the, since f of x is the top, then we just have f of x plus cos 2x minus e to the x. And so we're trying to find f prime of x, which is going to be 1 plus, now cos goes to negative sine, so it's really minus, minus sine 2x. Now, since this is the inside, we also have to, or since this is the outside function, we have to take the derivative of the inside. So this is times 2 minus e to the x, and this is very interesting because e to the x, the derivative is also e to the x. So what about the bottom function, g of x? Actually, actually I'll do it in the same color, although I kind of mixed them up. So g of x equals x squared, so therefore g prime of x equals 2x. So if we plug this in, we can see what happens. So we'll go 1 minus, or I'll go the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus sine 2x times 2 minus e to the x over 2x. But we get the same problem because if we put in 0, then this is going to be dividing by 0 again. We'll have, you know, this will become 0, and we can't do that. But since f prime of x over g prime of x equals L, then f prime prime of x over g prime prime of x equals L. So what happens if we just simply take another derivative? Let's go back up slightly. Yeah, okay. So if this was f prime of x, then f prime prime of x equals, now the one goes to zero, zero minus, now negative sine will go to negative cos, negative cos 2x. And now since we had the 2 here and we take another 2 inside, then we get times 4 and minus e to the x. And then we have to do the same for g of x. And so the second derivative of g of x, g prime prime of x, equals, we had 2x and now we're just going to get 2. So what happens if we plug these values in? We'll get negative 4 cos 
2x minus e to the x over, whoops, over 2. And this is as the limit, just to be very technically correct, as the limit of x approaches 0. So if we, now we can plug in 0 because we're not obviously dividing by 0. I mean, we have a 2 here now. So if we look at cos 2x, well, that's going to be evaluated at 2 times 0. So it's just going to be 0. So then cos 0 is 1. So then we get the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 4 because cos 2x is cos 0. That's going to be 1. It's going to be negative 4 times 1. Minus, now e to the x is going to be e to the 0. And anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. So it's negative 4 minus 1 over 2. And this is equal to negative 5 over 2. And that is the limit of that function. So negative 5 over 2 is the limit of this function here. And we just use L'Hopital's rule. Now, as you can see, sometimes just using L'Hopital's rule to find the first derivative doesn't work. So we can do it for the second derivative, as long as the limits exist on both of those functions. And they're continuous and differentiable at all points.